Hello, I'm Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN, and this video is about installing digital rebar for the first time. We call it DRP, and you'll hear me use that term throughout the videos. There are three different ways that we're going to cover for this first install process, isolated, virtual, and cloud. They all have the same basic setup, so we're going to show you that process in slides, and then we'll have special videos for each one. So make sure you're watching the right video for your environment. If you're not sure which one, hang on, we're going to talk about which one is which. No matter which install process you're using, it's all pretty much the same thing. You download Digital Rebar from the infrastructure's code catalog, you connect it to the infrastructure you want, and then you'll explore our full catalog and do more advanced things. Uh, those obviously are outside the scope of this video. So for your first Digital Rebar install video, you need to choose how you want to approach it. The simplest is to do a digital rebar on your desktop. This means actually running the service on your desktop itself. We have a special mode for that that doesn't set it up as a permanent service. Um, and that's a really nice way to get started, but it requires a Linux or a Mac desktop. Uh, it does use less resources and it's an excellent quick start. It's sort of our, our history click quick start. The other choice is to just run digital rebar in a virtual machine and then use that to provision other virtual machines. This works really well for Windows desktops. If you have a virtual uh, cluster that you can use as a dedicated infrastructure, or you don't want to have any impact on your desktop at all, uh, it uses more resources and RAM because you have to run a VM for digital rebar, but it doesn't leave any trail. You can just delete those VMs. And then finally, Digital Rebar in the Cloud is the newest addition to the Digital Rebar install family, where you set everything up using cloud infrastructure. Now, that won't let you test Pixie booting and machine provisioning, but it does let you play with all of the infrastructure's code capabilities, our Kubernetes and K3S capabilities, and build your own content packs, uh, play with our multi-cloud and distributed cloud infrastructure. So it's a lot of advanced functionality that works great using the cloud infrastructure and Digital Rebar works just fine in those cases also. So let's get to it. In the uh, digital rebar on your desktop, this is the environment that we're going to set up. We'll install digital rebar, and then we'll build the virtual machines in a host-only network so we can pixie boot them. We turn off DHCP in the virtual box or VMware system because digital rebar provides the DHCP system. It will only talk to that, bind it to only talk to that network. So everything will work just fine. And we'll walk you through this process if this is your path. The digital rebar and virtual machine is very similar to that process, except instead of running it on your desktop, we have to set up a virtual machine first. Usually a CentOS uh, machine is a good choice with four gigs of RAM and then attach that to the NAT network so you can download digital rebar and the host only network so you can pixie boot VMs. This actually is a bridged situation, works very well. Uh, just requires a little bit more setup and more RAM on the system that's running the demo. And the final is DRP in the cloud. In that case, you actually provision a machine in, in the cloud using the cloud infrastructure. You open port 8092, the digital rebar API port, and then you install cloud wrapper and cloud wrapper will automate the process of uh, provisioning and connecting to other virtual machines in the cloud or other clouds if you want uh, and connect all those together. So all three of these processes have the same basic step. They download our install.sh from getrebar.digital, they make it installable, and then they run um, the install.sh with install as the criteria. The difference in the isolated mode is that you actually tell it that you want an isolated uh, system. You ask for the version you want, usually tip or stable, depending on your, your level of interest in pulling in the latest things or, or just playing around with the last release. And then in this isolated version, you have to start digital rebar provision, DR provision yourself. Uh, that means you have to tell it where the files are going to be. You have to identify that it's a start to start the runner and create itself. In the cloud and VM models, you can run it as a systemd process. Of course, you could do that on your desktop too. You're welcome to. Um, but when you run install.sh and pass in systemd and tell it to start up, it will actually install as a systemd process and start it. 
So you pass in the parameters here and they get built into the system D definition. Very similar processes, but um, if you are able to just have a dedicated machine for digital rebar, it's super easy to just use the system D install. Once it's installed and running, and you shouldn't have to SSH into the um, cloud boxes if you pass in a bootstrapping script, then the first thing you're going to need to do is accept the TLS certificate. So uh, you'll go into the machine's IP colon 8092, it will accept the certificate and then redirect you to the digital rebar uh, UX, the hosted one. Now none of the traffic is actually coming to RackN. You are downloading a single page app in React, which is our UX, from RackN.io and then connecting directly to your digital rebar. We don't uh, cross your networks, we don't open firewall ports, we don't send traffic. Uh, we are not in the control loop. We're just providing the UX. Once you log in with the password that you chose, or the default one if you didn't set a password, Rocket Skates is the default, R0CKETSK8TS, it will prompt you if you hover over the question mark. The next step to do is to get a free trial license. This will enable all of the features that we are going to install and download as part of the trials, uh, including the cloud wrapper pieces, which do does require a uh, license to fully enable. Uh, provide a password. This process is changing, so if you're watching this video, uh, this is the old process that we're showing where you uh, give an email, you wait for a token, and come back. The new process eliminates those steps, and you will be able to just uh, provide uh, information that you feel comfortable providing, and then it will grant you a short term license immediately. From there, if you want to go to the system information and follow the bootstrapping wizard. The bootstrapping wizard is designed to make sure that you have configured all of the pieces and parts necessary to have a great trial experience. Uh, that includes making sure your passwords are set, setting the base content, making sure that you've uploaded the ISOs and boot environments, subnet definitions. Um, if you're in cloud, you don't need to worry about subnet definitions, preferences, SSH keys, and then finally starting machines. So this walks you through that. As you accomplish each step, you'll see a checkbox. If you click on the words, the, the link words, they will take you to the place you need to go to get that, that step done. And then finally, in the this demo, we are trial modes, we are always uh, encouraging you to use our bootstrap system, which means Digital Rebar is actually running an agent on itself and it can provide the bootstrapping processes automatically for you. We use this for zero touch remote edge installs um, and it's really, really convenient. And so we are recommending that for your first experience. Once you have this demo installed, then what you can do is literally run through the bootstrapping process um, on the machine and it will do all the setups that need to be done automatically for you. So let's install Digital Rebar. In this case, I'm installing on my desktop system. I have a Linux desktop. This will work very similar for the Mac OS. Uh, same basic steps. In this, what I've done is I've created a directory. This is for DRPv4.6. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, start the install process. So it's pretty simple in the isolated mode. I'm just downloading the install script. And then I'm running it with the isolated flag and telling it I want the tip version. Um, for the install in the, the isolated version, we're really counting on it running local on my desktop, um, so, which Digital Rebar will do just fine. We're not going to run it as System D. We're just going to run it literally in a console. Uh, I do this all the time. It's a great test way. It's easy to watch what's going on because the logs are going to go right to my screen. And it gives me a pretty straightforward to get uh, system to get running. Now, it's going to give me some advice about what to start. I'm not going to follow that advice. I want to do something a little different. And for that, I'm going to, whoops, got a sudo. And then I'm going to use DRB provision. I'm going to run my base route. I have to provide a data location. I'm also going to, I'm going to simplify this even more. I can start the manager. Manager is an advanced setup. Uh, if you're doing cloud provisioning, the manager becomes super handy. It's a way to do multi-site management. Uh, other videos, we will showcase that. But what I really want to do here is I want to start, start the runner and create myself. Uh, that will put us in the bootstrapping mode that we're recommending uh, for new users. It saves you a lot of time 
and it provides some really powerful features in digital rebar. Um, so I need to provide my password and this is starting digital rebar. So fun here. I can actually watch it do the scroll uh, and see what's going on. And at this point, digital rebar is actively running on my system. If I pull my console out of the way, come over here, go to HTTPS uh, 127. So just my local system, 8092 is digital rebar's port. And it's going to tell me that uh, I don't, I haven't trusted the certificate. So when you're doing this, Digital Rebar is HTTPS. It's going to generate its own certificate. Uh, in a production system, obviously, you generate your own certificates and add it to the system. Um, and here we go. This is now the Digital Rebar login. It's taken me over to the portal system. So this is Rack and Stable UX. Uh, I am going to run my local UX for this uh, because I want to be able to show you the very latest features. Uh, by the time you actually log in and, and see these demos, most of these should roll, have rolled into production. If you want to see the latest cool stuff, then go to tip.portal.rackend.io instead of portal.rackend.io. Let's see. It's telling me I haven't accepted the certificate. Ah, because I have a typo. Fix that right here. Excellent. So it's asking me to log in. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And what you'll see if I pull this over, uh, as it's doing the logins, all of this activity of me logging in is showing up as part of the um, uh, console. So this is this is the live system. I get to watch it and check on and see what's going on. Uh, here I've logged in. It's taking me to the info and preferences page and it's showing me the, the bootstrapping wizard. The bootstrapping wizard is your friend. Um, it's going to help make sure you complete all of the steps that need to get done in order to have a successful demo. Uh, so here we go. I'm going to go ahead and, and while I'm on the screen, I'm going to add my key. Very helpful to add your public key into the system. That looks great. I'm also going to visit the license manager. Uh, the, in 4.6, we're going to streamline this process and make it much easier. If you're looking at um, system and you see a view like this, you'll need to go ahead and create a login account and then authorize your license. If you already had a license, you can upload an existing license, which I'm going to go ahead and do. Here's my license. I upload that and this looks great. I'm verified. I'm registered. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and check to get the absolute latest license set up and all green checks. I am good to go. Uh, jump back over to info and preferences. Nothing's really changed over here. I have some, some work to do because I did the self runner. I don't have to do manual configuration to the same extent uh, that I would have in earlier versions. I can go ahead and I can run a bootstrap base and let it go through and pull down the basic images and the pieces and parts that I need. And that looks really good. One thing you'll notice here is that let's see, and it's going to go download Sledgehammer, our discovery image, and uh, start this process going. That looks really good. If I drop back over to my info and preferences screen, uh, hasn't seen all those things come in. It is suggesting I download task library. So the challenge of doing an isolated mode, it starts with very minimal things in it. Uh, the wizard's making sure that I get task library installed. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, this is the stable version. Since I'm running tip, I'm going to go ahead and pick the very latest version. So that's the four, six pieces. That's good. You can see how easy it is to download and choose things. So if I wanted to um, play with other components, I can literally choose them, pick the version that I want to install and then download. Uh, so we've put a lot of work into making the catalog very, very easy to use from that perspective. And, uh, a combination of me installing the different pieces and the bootstrapper running in the background means I now have a uh, sledgehammer installed uh, and I'm looking pretty good. I haven't set up a subnet yet. That's going to be the next thing I need to do provisioning. So uh, before I do that, I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to enter a new um, system. So let's see. I want to, I already have DRP CLI. Let me show you how to get the DRP CLI installed. Uh, one thing you can definitely do is go into uh, 
um, let's say say machines go to the CLI if you click in here it's going to open information about digital rebar CLI but uh, we include digital Re rebar CLI in the base system so if you go and do some uh, in installs you can jump over to files find the appropriate digital rebar CLI for your platform download that uh, and then just rename it to DRP CLI and you will have our command line interface ready to go what I want to do is I'm going to set my endpoint so RS endpoint is the digital rebar endpoint rocket skates is the code name the original code name for digital rebar HTTPS 127.0.0.1.0.0.1.80.92 so that'll tell it where to go and then I need to set my uh, username and password as the key uh, which is rocket skates and rocket skates and once I've done those two things I can obviously if you change the password you need to use the updated password that's why I'm showing you this and then what I want to do is DRP CLI info get that shows me that the system is up available a whole bunch of information back including the version number so that looks really good and I can say DRP CLI machines list uh, it's going to give me back a big JSON blob I actually just want to see the JQ of the names there's only one so that is what I expected to see so now I'm actually talking to the machine if I want to I can DRP CLI um, let's see I want boot ems upload ISO so um, if I ask for help going to give me a uh, pretty comprehensive help on all of the commands and you can see how things go I want the CentOS 8 install environment and I'm going to go ahead and uh, let it upload and download that environment so this is, is literally going into the digital rebar content that I have finding the URL downloading that and then uploading it into digital rebar uh, that's going to take a little while in the background I don't have to do it that way one of my other options if I want is I can go into the UX uh, find my boot environments boot environments this is a list of them and so for the ones that I want I can um, say I wanted let's go to the next page uh, my center my an Ubuntu install that looks great so I can I can pull down here download that ISO and then in ISOs I can upload uh, and do it in two steps so I have a list of items that I have here's the uh, Ubuntu 18204 it's telling me there's a matching boot end, which is great and I can go ahead and upload that um, and it will um, do the same thing as I'm doing of course I can do that with the CLI also uh, many many different ways to get systems in I want to show you a couple of them um, where you can see that we're actually doing it in this case it's still only got a partial um, of that CentOS DVD which we'll want for later all these are getting stored in that directory um, where I have the bits and pieces um, that where I started the DRP install from and if I come back over take a look here uh, what you'll see is uh, those actions are actually showing up as log entries out of digital rebar I can actually watch it work if you want you can also jump over to the logs and uh, see all the logs and find out what's going on uh, from that perspective and see what's see what's see the actions of the system so now it's time to provision a virtual machine ah, wait let's check nope we're almost there we have to do a subnet provision first I'm gonna go ahead and click add here these are all the NICs that are defined on my machine you'll see like docker and CNI and things like that uh, this VBox net zero is my host only network for the system I'm going to go ahead and use that interface now if you are using VirtualBox what you might find is that if you have never created a machine and booted it up you will not have this interface and so it is possible that you will have to go through the process of creating a machine first to have that interface I'm going to go ahead and show you what that would look like machine 01 doesn't really matter what I put here Linux 
uh, you want to give it four gigs of RAM, too little RAM, too little disk, and the system obviously will be uh, very unhappy. So I'm going to go ahead and let it let it do that. Uh, pretty much any size virtual disk is fine for what we're doing, but the system's defaults are not going to work for digital rebar. Um, the first thing is the system does not pixie boot by default, so I have to go in and tell it to pixie boot and let it pixie boot first. And for networking, I want to um, go ahead and use this host only adapter. This adapter is what we're going to use for our pixie booting. If you're in the system and you need to make sure you turn off DHCP for that host only adapter, I'll show you that in just a minute. And I'm going to go ahead and attach a NAT adapter to this machine also. That will allow that machine to uh, talk to the internet through uh, VirtualBox, which is very helpful uh, for provisioning operations. If I come over here under my um, network and my host network manager, what you'll see is I have VBox Net Zero, so I've, I had to create a host only network and I turned off the DHCP server. So you do not want DHCP enabled on these networks. Um, if you don't turn it off, then um, it will conflict with Digital Rebar's DHCP server and you will, you will not have a good uh, demo experience. We're going to close this. Oh, looks like uh, VirtualBox was not happy from that perspective. Bring VirtualBox back, check machine one, settings, make sure everything I did got saved. VBox zero, NAT adapter, all that looks perfect. So uh, if you don't see this VirtualBox zero network, you will have to start it and then stop it in order for that to happen. Uh, in this case, I have this network. I can use the interface and it's going to give me good uh, options. So the setup, the defaults are safe for this. Uh, it's identified the subnet range that I have, which is 5610. Gives me a reasonable lease set, sets my default gateway. Now for this example, I actually don't want to use uh, the host as my default gateway. I want to use that NATed port. So I can disable these because uh, they're not going to route traffic anyway. And um, that makes this um, network not offer a gateway. So when you're, if you're going to turn on that second NATed NIC, which I recommend you doing, and I'll show you how to take advantage of, um, you want to turn off the gateway for the provisioning infrastructure. Handy tip to know. So at this point, I've got everything set up. Let me check our wizard. Our wizard says everything is done except the machines. Let's provide some machines. So here's machine one. We're going to go ahead and start it. And it is going to go ahead and run through and do DHCP. Digital Rebar is going to answer that DHCP request and provide it with Sledgehammer or Discovery OS. That's looking great. And the system is going ahead and booting and doing all the normal provisioning steps that I would expect. Uh, Sledgehammer is highly tuned to be very fast. It's in memory. It doesn't require any disk. Uh, and so it, and it runs on pretty much everything that we have. It's already installed up here. You can see the sledgehammer icon, um, uh, header screen. That looks great. Drag these things out of the way, come back over to machines. And what you'll see is this is the machine that we just provisioned. I can click in here. You can see the go high inventory on it. That looks really good. Um, so this machine is ready to go from an install perspective. What I want to add, in here. Oh, and let me show you because I added my SSH keys. I should be able to SSH into that box now. 168 56.10. That was the first mission, first address. It's going to tell me that, Hey, this isn't the key that I remember, which is right because I've logged into this address before and I come in and now I am logged into uh, digital rebar 
and that is the sledgehammer logo and so now i have a fully functional os i can go ahead and play with and do all sorts of things that i want to do uh, so now i have a working system what i'd like to be able to do is install centos on it um, <laughs> and then i'm going to use that as my install base for my digital rebar in a vm demo uh, so check out that video if you want to see how to, how to take advantage of that. But for now, what I want to do is I want to set this up to use the other interface. So let me look at the interfaces that are available. Here is uh, the provisioning network that looks all set up. But this one is down. There's no interface to find on it at all. I want to grab that in P0S8. And in the machine definition, I just clicked edit. I'm going to add in uh, this kickstart extra IFs, extra IFs. That looks really good. So for the CentOS, I'm provisioning CentOS here. I can define that network interface as an extra interface to define. And that will tell CentOS when I install, or uh, CentOS when I install it to use and enable that extra interface as a DHCP interface. Super handy to have. And what I want to do is, so right now I have this machine, it's sitting in Sledgehammer. I have downloaded CentOS 8. So now we have everything ready. We are going to go ahead and start a CentOS install. We'll just have to pick CentOS base here, start the workflow. I'm going to go ahead and put this on top so that we can watch both go at the same time. So here's the machine I've selected, CentOS base should be good to go. Notice it starts the install immediately uh, and it's going to run through. Because I have that NATed interface set up, it's going to uh, attach to the internet, download any additional things it needs. It's really handy um, and it's going to run through the process. Um, now this install takes a little bit of time. I'm going to go ahead and uh, move this here so that you can watch it. The window is going to get a little bigger. And with the magic of time lapse, you will get to watch this whole video uh, go through much, the whole install process go through much, much faster. Here we go. So what you'll see now is we're basically wrapping up the install. Uh, the digital rebar agent is running on the system, so it's back alive. Um, we've got our post install scripts going and it looks like we are complete. Um, does a reboot and starts the system and we, we're, we are in business with a new operating system. Now, what I've done here is I've actually used this CentOS install as the basis for the next install video. Um, I needed a CentOS OS and it made a ton of sense. Uh, and you were welcome to take uh, this system and then play around with it. Uh, your SSH keys will be propagated in it and it is just a regular CentOS OS. Now, this takes a while because installing an OS uh, through Netboot is pretty slow. What I would suggest you do, so we're going to go ahead and log in, is take a look at our image-based deployment. It is so much faster. Uh, you can do about three or four image deployments in the same time it takes to run one uh, deployment. And so here, I'm just gonna SSH back into that box. Once again, we just reinstalled it, so my SSH key is not valid anymore, or my uh, the signature is all messed up. That looks good. So now I've got this new machine. This is my CentOS uh, system. And I should be able to ping uh, Google's DNS servers. I can. Um, so I have full access to the internet from this box. Uh, it is ready to roll as a fully installed system. So in this video, I have shown uh, you how to install Digital Rebar on your, from your desktop and then provision VMs first to Sledgehammer and then to a fully formed operating system. Uh, from here, there's a lot of great things to learn. One of the things that we often suggest people do is check out Color Demo, which teaches you how to do infrastructure as code with Digital Rebar System. 
really, really uh, powerful thing to do. And of course, check out the catalog and you can download and play with things as part of uh, that infrastructure where you can go in, find components like I did earlier, uh, pick the version that matches your system and uh, get rolling. I hope this was helpful and please reach out to us. Uh, we love to answer questions, hear what you're doing, uh, share ideas with how to make uh, infrastructure better. Thanks.